Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Topic today is about storytelling. And in fact, I'm gonna tell you to stop telling stories, especially in a relationship. <laughs> and I explain why you might not realize you're doing that and also what you can do about it. So before I jump into the topic and give you the formal expose, and I'm to introduce myself and give you uh, some details about who I am, why I do this stuff and why I've done 865 broadcasts. Um, hi Gina, nice to see you here. My name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert and a best-selling author of the book 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. There's also a second book brewing. I'm not going to tell you about that yet. Um, and I'm, I'm a, I help women create balance in love, life and business. This is done because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. I just spent a whole weekend, I'll tell you about that in a moment, with women. And it also started these talks almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're at episode number 865. And the topic today is about storytelling. And I don't mean it in a good way. You know, being a, being a marketing person, if you're in marketing or sales, telling a good story is part of the marketing tools. This is not that. <laughs> What, I, what I'm going to talk about is actually the stories we tell ourselves and tell other people in our relationships, and especially when we're single. I'm almost, almost going to put a PS on there, like practice when you're single, but that didn't fit the title. So the title stands as stop telling stories, especially in your relationship. I, let me recap a couple of things to give you some, pre, some preface, a preface for this topic. Um, I spent the weekend, as I mentioned, in a women's re, uh, event, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I did broadcast. I'm very proud of myself actually. I did broadcast at 5 p.m. every single day. It worked on my schedule because the last time I did it, it was like 11 p.m., 6 p.m., 4 p.m. It was all over the place. So I'm grateful I got to do that. And the topics I covered were drawn from conversations I had at the event, but also tied to the idea, which I did two talks about last week, about telling the truth and about not lying. This is another spin on that because I'm realizing some people are getting the fact that they're actually lying to themselves without even realizing it. So this may not be you, but somebody you know. So just to be clear, I'm not presuming it's you. It might be. You'd have to tell me. But if it does affect somebody you know, you might want to just um, <laughs> share this video with them. <laughs> they might wonder why you're sharing it with them, but that's another story. So what I mean in this context is that we are, well, as I say it this way, we're storytelling beings. As human beings, we tell stories all the time. However, one of the most... Um, surreptitious and and challenging ones is we tell ourselves stories and we make up stories about other things in life for example if you're someone let's say a woman in this context who's been through some abusive relationships and you've maybe had three or four of them over the years you might be telling yourself a story that you only deserve to be hurt that you only deserve to have a relationship where you get wounded it's a lie, but you tell yourself that story anyway because of your past experience. And our storytelling a lot of times is made up in either the vacuum of not having better information, or because we've had certain experiences, we then make that the law in our mindset and our rules, which we then build stories upon. So this is tying back into what I said last week about lying, when you're telling yourself lies and telling other people lies about um, not telling your truth. This is the same sort of thing, but it's a more subtle approach because for many people, you don't even realize you're telling lies. In fact, you're in a paradigm where you believe what you're doing is doing the best you can. So you're being almost somehow like a, I won't say a martyr, but you may be feeling that you're being altruistic because you're doing the best you can. And you believe, because you're telling yourself the story, that you can't have better. So I want to shatter some illusions that are going around here. For those of you, or for you in particular, if you're watching this and it's true for you, where well, you have a belief or actually have a story that you're telling yourself, that you can't have the relationship with that person you've seen or you can't have the relationship with a certain person you're in because you haven't had something like that before or because you live in a different city or because your income levels are different or because you don't think they ever want to see you. All those sort of things come up where we have these rules which are basically stories and stories as in fictional stories to be clear about what we can and can't have. Now this theme is not just about relationships by the way you may just realize uh, i just realized certainly maybe you already realized that this applies to all areas, all areas of life for the job you want to have for the business you want to start for the income you want to generate or receive or have for the city you want to live in for the ability to move all these things are predicated upon us believing it's possible but most of us tell ourselves stories that make it impossible 
hang on a second just watching where that's going all right so that, no that's dead end okay it's interesting watching <laughs> inside my mind is an interesting place to be when i'm doing my talks because i don't have a script or bullet points it's just a title i've written down or i, I posted because it was relevant in the moment and then i see where it goes okay so we are and this is the funny thing is that true okay i'm gonna play i'm gonna throw this out and see if it's true and i'm not sure if it is or not but i suspect the more we do this work those of us are doing the personal growth journey learning and growing become better human beings the more we start making up stories that are actually shooting ourselves in the foot meaning that the more we grow and learn and become amazing people because we're actually let me say it another way the more we do this work and we realize we realize that we're amazing people because we already were we have a tendency to start comparing ourselves more unfavorably with people who are further ahead in the path maybe that's just me i don't know but i suspect it may be other people too where we have this paradigm or belief system or a rule that we run that we can never be the best in our field so we tell ourselves a story that we have to be second best to other people or we have to be um not so, not so we have to be but other people are much better than us because they're more experienced or because they're more visible maybe the bigger audience they've done more events we use that to to gauge where we're less than them and it's a story we tell ourselves i was doing that this weekend <laughs> unfortunately well unfortunately because i i got some feedback on it watching certain people present and this is the thing what i'm watching is people on the stage because they're on stage presenting they must be better than me that's one of the rules i've been running and i and i i blew that up i blew this up this weekend so that's why it's on my mind and I really got clear, first of all, that the skills I already have, the background I already have, and the comfort of being on camera over 865 times is an absolute um, evaluation that what I can bring to the stage is at least as good as that. But I wasn't telling myself that this weekend. I was judging myself, and this is the thing with storytelling against ourselves, is judgment. I was telling myself stories about these people on stage because they a appeared, he appeared, to have more success. Because they were on stage, they had a much better booth than I did, they had all this pretty stuff. And it was all a story I was running in here. None of it was out there, it was all in here. But the, again, that thing we talk about is judgment. We judge and gauge ourselves as less than other people because of what we think we observe. So we might, and this is the thing, we might observe something in the world with maybe the maybe they're driving a nice car and we make up a whole story about oh well, they must be doing better than us because they have a nicer car than we do and everything else meanwhile what's going on is they're driving a rental because their car died they don't have a nice car right now but the car they're driving because it's nicer we think that's their car and we make this judgment again maybe this is just me but i think other people may have the same feeling too so we basically make a decision about what we see and judge accordingly and then we judge negatively accordingly this is the story or the stories that we make up that limits us from being free to have what we want. And I want to make this very clear to you. These stories are fictitious. They have no truth in them. They might hint at some truth, but nine times out of ten, they are stories that actually have actually take us away. They veer away from the truth. So we don't actually get to be um, beneficiaries beneficiaries of the truth, of knowing what's really happening and seeing what's really going on. I'm grateful I got to have some conversations this weekend that cleared the air for me and really set a new place in, inside of me to recognize that my um, equality with other people on stage is really true, even though I've not been on the stage as many times as they have. But it's the thing, that simply data points. And this is the thing with storytelling. We maybe take four or five loose data points from all over the map and we make up a story that weaves them all together than when they have no correlation to each other. This is the thing with storytelling. It's a, um, what's what I'm looking for? It's a creative skill, but nine times out of 10, it doesn't mean the truth. What if you chose to write stories differently? What if, for example, you had those four or five data points of things you saw or witnessed at a certain event or a certain place or a certain person or a certain environment, and you decided to write the story from those five points in an intentionally positive successful direction what would happen then what would you be affirming what would you be declaring what would you be moving the direction of that you hadn't before 
I've been doing things. I've been going through my own process. Today's, today's been my decompression day because I've a very you know three four days and and a thousand pictures which I'm now paring down. I got to really see some things today, just in being, where things were better than I thought they were. So I was decompressing and reevaluating re and seeing some things and reviewing things for me from the weekend. Not even notes, but just awarenesses I had this weekend. But what I'm aware of is the contrast between the stories I made up and the truth of what's going on. And I invite you to consider for yourself where you may be discovering where the stories you've been making up and telling yourself don't match the reality of what's happening. And I mean that in the sense that your life is way better than those stories might tell you otherwise. Now, the challenge is we don't see life as being better than it is when we're so invested in the story. So what I'm suggesting is two things. One is give up those stories that aren't working for you because they don't work for you. And two, either witness what's real and explore and enjoy the reality of what's true. And if you don't know, ask questions. I mean, that's what you can do by texting, calling, et cetera, et cetera, with people you want to talk to. At the same time, there's another piece of this, which is you can actually start creating new stories that are spun towards the direction you want to go in. They're also called affirmations, by the way. Because really what affirmations are, are components of a story that you're affirming for what you want to have happen. So why not change direction? And Since you are the creator of your story, create a story of where you want to go versus where you don't want to go. That's something you can play with in your own time. It's something in my coaching that's funny, I'm realizing as I'm saying this, what I'm doing is I'm helping my clients see their lives more clearly so they can create a new story that's more positive. So this is kind of what I do in my coaching, not, not literally, although maybe I'll start adding this into my coaching. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm aware of the fact that we all have the opportunity to change our direction. Right here, right now, in this moment, you can say, you know what? Life isn't going the way I want it to. I'm going to change that. And it could be just one step, one incremental movement in the direction you want to go in. But by writing out what you want, by clarifying what you want, by owning what you want to have, by affirming your direction you want to move into, you can change direction. In my book, um, no, it's not in my book, excuse me. In my online course, I have a course for women called Attract the Man You Want, and some ladies this weekend were looking at getting it. Each of the modules, there's eight modules of the program, have aff affirmations after each of the different modules because it tunes and accelerates what's happening. So I'm passionate about affirmations being useful. But if you can build a story out of affirmations, now that is going to be fun. You take your energy, your focus, your enjoyment, your, your exuberance, your excitement, of taking those affirmations and then weaving a story out of them. The way I describe it is, is um, it's called, actually, well, well, I'm borrowing this term from my master's program because we learned this at the school, was, was calling it a living vision. So taking your story and making a living vision, a vision being what you want to see, where you want to go, what you want to have. And that understanding will shift your paradigm from limited to open, from impossible to possible, from what not working to amazing. But it's all up to you. So you have the choice to do that. And so I'm encouraging you to look at how you can rewrite your story by simply choosing to affirm where you want to go and start building from there. It sounds simplistic, but it's potent when you start getting the truth in place. So with that, hi Gail, let's see my broadcast. With that, um, I'll mention a couple of links I'll put in the comments because I was put a call to action in my videos, as you may know if you've watched more than one. Um, because I mentioned a few things, I'm gonna put some in the comments. This is mostly for the ladies but I will put links in there if you want to get my book, because that's for everybody. Um, I'll put a link in the comments to have a chat with me, because you want to find out how to work with me for a woman particularly, because I work with women. Men generally don't work with don't work with men, just the way it is. Um, and third, I'll put a link in the, co in the comments for my Attract the Man You Want program, so you can check it out. And if you want to get it, you'll have the affirmations and everything with it. It's a whole, whole kit and caboodle. Um, but I'm happy to hear from you. What stories are you willing to rewrite in your life? What stories have you been using, been running, been hypnotized by? that no longer serve you? And what do you want to do in instead? That's your homework as well, by the way, for yourself. Not for me, but if you want to tell me about it, you can. So take this to heart. You can, the story you're talking about, the story you're thinking about, the story that's in you is absolutely, fully, 100% editable, rewritable, and under your control. You're not stuck anywhere with this. You can change it anytime you want. So why not start now? So with that, I thank you for watching my broadcast. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can join me here if you want. You can watch the replays if you want. That's on my business page, which is Barry Selby, the author. Although only about half of them over there, for some reason, I think Facebook doesn't save that far back or doesn't present that far back. 
but my business page is barryselby.author. You can like my page and watch the broadcast there. However, I've been backing them all up because I learned when I was using Periscope to do that. So if you go to my YouTube channel, I have all of them there. So my YouTube channel is Barry Selby, as most of my social media is. Um, so subscribe to my YouTube channel and there's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. All 865, including this one, will be up there. So with that, thank you for watching. I do invite you to check out my other work, check out my other videos, reach out for support, click on the links, get some help, rewrite your story, transform your life, and have what you really want. That's my wish for you. That's my intention for you. That's what I'm holding for you. And if you want to get to work, to work together on this, I can help you with it. With that, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.